Yo, hello everyone. It is um, Thursday, June twenty second. The time is uh, ten oh three New York local time, and watching the Nasdaq here. Um, I was tape reading the the uh, Nasdaq and the o nine thirty uh, swing low here swept. Um, swept that London PM low and it swept the London AM low and now we're moving higher we're moving up into um, an order block here on the an order block here on the 10 the uh, 5 minute 10 minute time frame and we're moving up into the 25% of it. Uh, so we're also moving up into this fair value gap that I'm highlighting with my cursor. So because we just swept these two prior lows, I'm expecting price to want to um, come back down and revisit this. So my entry was not perfect here. I saw this displacement candle right here and I thought that that might be the trigger. Um, so I got short at the uh, the halfway point of this candle right here. I was calling that an order block. That wasn't really an order block. But um, so I made a little bit of an error. But what I want to see is I want to see it trade through this little one minute um, one minute inverted fair value gap here. And so I want to see it come trade down below that. Maybe come back up and revisit it, and then move lower. So that's what I want to see. And I can get to trading the micro Russell, my cash account. So I can't trade top step right now because I hit the profit limit. So here, let's see if it wants to treat this inverted fair value gap here as uh, resistance. Let's see if it wants to. So we got our displacement candle here low. And if it leaves an inefficiency here, then we're definitely coming back down. See if it wants to leave and even open. Now we're trading back into it. So right there would be an immediate rebalance. Now we're coming back into the consequent encroachment of this one minute candle wick. We come up to the open of the candle. Let's see that. So we've got a decent displacement candle here to the downside. Still wanting to respect this fair value gap. So my entry wasn't perfect. It's wanting to respect, so here's an immediate rebalance. If we, if we trade lower, that would be an immediate rebalance, which would be a good sign for lower prices. And the reason why I'm thinking lower prices is because our um, New York AM uh, Judas swing here just swept the prior lows, did not run them, uh, so it didn't fully explore this lower pool of liquidity. And so I'm thinking this is a Judas swing. Um, coming into our silver bullet time frame, we're trading up into this inefficiency here on the left. So I'm highlighting that with my cursor. Now we also traded up into this order block that I'm highlighting with my cursor. And I broke that down into quarters. And uh, you can see that the wick here respected the 25% uh, retracement. I'll just turn this around so you're not confused. You can see that the wick here res respected the 25% of that um, order block on the left, but it's also uh, traded up into this fair value gap and the one that I got in on, which is right here. So back to the one minute chart, decent displacement candle downwards. It's still not wanting to close, uh, close below. Well, we got one close below on this displacement candle of this inverted fair value gap. Um, this is an immediate rebalance here, a bearish immediate rebalance. That'd be a good sign for lower prices. The context is that I want it to come all the way back. Uh, I want to come it all the way back to um, 964, all the way back, because we didn't we didn't fully explore the. Um, 
Whenever you see a sweep and it's not a run, so if you just see a little sweep like this, so our London, excuse me, our New York AM low here swept the London PM low and it swept the London AM low, um, that's not a full exploration of this liquidity pool. That's, um, what do you call it? That's just a poke into it. That's a sweep into that this liquidity pool down here. So if the trading algorithms turn uh, bearish, then they're going to want to come in and uh, fully explore here below uh, 19, 14,964. You're going to want to come in and trade below. Now, I'm not going to try and get that full amount because um, I don't I don't need to. Uh, I'll pass my Apex account at um, 6K. If this position gets to 6K, which I'm pretty sure uh, my buy limit would get me get me there. Okay, so it is. Res Let's see if it wants to respect this inverted fair value gap now. Got a decent bearish close here after an immediate rebalance following this bearish displacement candle. Could also be a little mini three drives pattern here. But it's still wanting to respect this inverted fair value gap. So I'm not feeling super great about the position. Probably just going to put that stop right there at break, break even because um, I don't really want to take a loss on this, to be honest with you. Just get back in later if I take a loss. Because it might want to come and trade back further into this order block. Okay, so that was a decent bearish displacement candle, but uh, price came down to this first order block here and is still moving higher. So let's give it a shot at this 50% of this order block, which would be right there at 09 spot 25. So it did respect this fair value gap thus far. So now what I'm going to try is uh, the 50% of this 10 minute order block. large bullish displacement candle So we've traded up into the 75% of this order block now. I'm highlighting on the left. Fully traded well above this, um, traded above this 10 minute inefficiency that I'm highlighting with the cursor. So that would be our silver bullet there. Let's see if it wants, does it want to come all the way up to this inefficiency up higher? to three. This would be a three drives pattern if we come back down. Now oh, let's not go for that. Let's go for 47 spot one that would be trading into this order block here without getting today to the 50 percent
Okay, back to our NASDAQ here. Got a, we got um, two closes here at the 75% of that order block on the one minute time frame. Might want to come up to 137 spot 25. This um, spindle top candle here, spinning top candle, would also be an inefficiency. This would be a former fair value gap. This would be another silver bullet attempt right here. So we're currently trading in it. This might be the inefficiency that they're looking for. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put in the stop loss in the marketplace so I don't lose the whole account. Still think this is going to want to come back though. Come all the way back. So obviously not my ideal entry. Um, but luckily I'm on the big account so I get the big 7500 drawdown. Um, so we, we obviously have traded uh, well above the 75% of this order block. Haven't gotten a one minute or a 10 minute, excuse me, close above it. We've got a five minute close above the 75% of this order block and we've traded into this inefficiency that I have on the left and that would be a pretty decent silver bullet setup there uh, to get short on. What I need to see is a bearish displacement candle. Okay, so I need to see um, these two candles could become an order block if we trade below this first candle's open. So if we trade below uh, 117 spot 75, these two up close candles would then become a, uh, an order block. So if you're wondering why I have the yellow box, it's because of this fair value gap here, right over here. Okay, so we have our first down close candle that price is probably going to react off of. I want to see it trade below. I want to see it trade below this, right here at. Uh, 118 evens. So if we can get a trade below 118 evens, this would make these two up close candles here an order block. We let's see if we can keep any separation between these two candles right here. That would be a good bearish sign if we can keep some separation. Nope, no separation. Let's see if we turn down an immediate rebalance. Or if it wants to turn these two black candles into another uh, bullish order block and go higher. We reacted off this black candle here.
I want to see it trade below 118 evens. That's really what I want to see. We are trading, we're exploring this fair value gap that we had in the past. It's in the yellow box. We're trading above a 10 minute order block. We're getting some close, closes above that 75%. But I'm still not bullish on this because we haven't explored the liquidity lower. So I think it's going to drag price back down. See my micro rustle. Got short uh, in this fair value gap. It, it's probably going to run against me some, but then I'm looking for it. Um, when we're looking at the daily time frame, we just uh, redeliver this fair value gap that we had here, and we have an order block lower, and so um, I think we're at least going to trade on the daily time frame here on the rustle. I think. Thursday's trading might come back down to um, the 25% of this order block. Okay, displacement candle. If we can keep part of this open, that would be good. I want to I want to see if we can keep a fair value gap here open. So if we don't come back and trade to 132 three quarters, if we don't see 132 three quarters, then um, then I'm liking it to the. I'm liking it to the bearish side, so let me just draw that out for you. If we can keep this separation, that would be great. Okay, still have a little bit of separation, which is what I want to see. I want to see that the trading algorithms are turning from a buy side algorithm to a um, sell side algorithm or even a chaos algorithm okay so we do have separation here and we've got a fair value gap here now I want to see if if price um, respects it okay we're trading back into it let's see if we close into it now we're trading we're wicking above it I want to see how this one minute candle closes. If the one minute candle here can close, leaving some separation, that would be a good sign. Okay, so we have not closed. Yeah, so we left some separation there, which is a good sign. Again, I want to see if we can get, uh, we don't have to close below it. We just need to trade below purple line here. Change that into a red line. Or no, let's do a pink. No, don't want to do. Okay, it's a blue. So if we can get trading below blue line, So we um, we left some separation here, left that fair value gap open. So this could be our breakaway uh, fair value gap here. Okay, so now we have a bearish order block, our first one right here. If we can trade with some, some more separation. We just traded below 118 evens. We traded to 117 quarters. So that would be a bearish order block now if we can get some uh, separation.
So it's um, it's thinking about respecting this fair value gap here that I'm highlighting with my cursor. Okay. Yeah, I don't like to see that it's uh, initially respected this fair value gap here. Trading up into what I would, maybe this would be a bearish order block here. We don't have a lot of separation, but I'm going to call this a bearish order block. We traded back up into about the 75% of it here in one minute order block. Um, we have no separation, so I'm not going to call this a bear sorter block just yet. So, just to give you a, a broader idea of what I'm thinking here, again, uh, I think this is a, a Judas swing. Um, and I think uh, price is just coming in and... and uh, re-delivering re this um, fair value gap that I'm highlighting with my cursor here on the 10 minute chart. Highlighting with the cursor that would be our AM silver bullet right there. We're also trading um, above this bear sorter block. Uh, let's see. So you can see that we're trading above this bear sorter block. That, that's what those red lines are. And we got a good close above it, but uh, it ran into another inefficiency. So now we're, an order block is kind of drawing us back down. Russell's still trying to uh, hang there. So this was a good bearish close, but it's still trying to respect this inverted fair value gap, which I don't like seeing. I want to see it come and trade below this uh, fair value gap right here. So I like that we see a lot of closes below this this little separation here. I want to see it continue to close below. It's working in between these two fair value gaps right now. And we're trading back up into the fair value gap here. Let's see if it wants to invert. Trading back up into our 10 minute inefficiency. Okay, so we closed above this um, fair value gap, which I don't like to see. That's not a good sign. It's trying to rebalance it right now.
Okay, so now it's rebalanced the fair value gap here. This is not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. Let's see if we can get any separation here to the downside. I want to see some separation between candles. Really what we need to see is separation. If we can get some separation here, that would be great. Uh, it still doesn't want to give us any separation. Yeah, obviously my entry was not optimal. I'm not going to add on more risk though, just watching it. So that would be an immediate rebalance if we can get a move lower. Price is trading very efficiently right now. So all the candles are overlapping each other. So right now, uh, Chaos Algorithm is in control of the marketplace, I would say. I don't like to see what I'm seeing, so I might close this trade out for a loss. just efficiently trading right now kind of exploring that 10 minute fair value gap inefficiency just exploring it repricing re redelivering it so we go back to our 10 minute time frame again this is the fair value gap that I'm talking about here okay we take that you could see that it's respecting the um, 25% of that, which is a good sign. So it's just re exploring it right now. Check out our micro Russell. Still, uh, still hanging there. So just efficient trading right now. No separation between the candles at all.
these two candles here would be a bearish order block if we could trade below them. There's no separation between these candles, so just very efficient trading right now. Very, very efficient. So the reason why I'm just kind of quiet right now is because, again, we have no separation between the candles. So it's all just efficient trading. I want to see if we can get some separation. Coming back down to this inverted fair value gap, coming back uh, to um, reclaim it, a reclaimed inverted fair value gap right here. Again, no separation between these candles. This could be an immediate rebalance though, right between this candle one and candle three. That's not a pattern that I'm super comfortable with though. Okay, so still no separation in the candles. We're now closing, trading below that 10 minute inefficiency though. That's what, I, that's what I have in the yellow box, 10 minute inefficiency. Check out our micro Russell. Yeah, we're holding drawdown on this um, hourly time frame. Let's go down. Let's see our micro Russell. So it's coming back up into this uh, fair value gap, and it's testing out the 50% of that right now. Let's see if it respects it. The reason why I'm holding short on the micro Russell again is because we just redelivered this fair value gap that we had just below price. I think that price is, want to come, is going to want to come down today uh, and explore at least the 25% here of this bearish order, excuse me, bullish order block right here. Uh, looking at our 15 minute time frame, we can see that we just ran below uh, Thursday's London AM low and we just ran Wednesday's New York AM low. Uh, and so those might act as uh, bearish breakers now. So if those would be bearish breakers, then we can trade lower. Let's get back to the NASDAQ. No separation in these candles, just efficiently trading. Still no separation in the candles. As you know, I'm short on a higher time frame than one minute, a 10 minute idea. We go back to our 10 minute. And you can see that we, uh, uh, during the silver bullet time frame, we are trading up into this 10 minute inefficiency I'm highlighting with the cursor and I have in the yellow box. So that is our AM silver bullet here, right here with the cursor. Michael Russell, I think, wants to turn back down. So no separation in these candles yet on the one minute time frame, just efficiently trading. It's still trying to see if it wants to punch through this inverted fair value gap. We came down, we, we uh, inverted for the first time, and then we reclaimed it the second time we touched it. So we reclaimed it second time. Now it looks like it might want to give us some separation. Okay, so now we have a bearish displacement candle. We're coming back down into this fair value gap. 
let's see if we want to come down first and reclaim this inverted fair value gap that we have down here. So I want to see some separation in the candles. I don't want to see this come and trade all the way back up to, uh, what's this low? 114 quarters. This traded up to uh, 113 halves. So we do have a bit of separation there. And that's what I want to see. I want to see separation. So right here and uh, right here. We can keep that separation open. That would be fantastic. Okay, we're punching through that inverted fair value gap. And now we want to see maybe if it can, uh, you know, dynamic support and resistance, right? So let's see if this inverted fair value gap can invert to the other side. As we see if we can come back lower. We're trading into this fair value gap here that I'm showing with my cursor. And if we can trade through it, that would be a balanced price range. Micro Russell is also turning uh, turning back lower. Okay. Um, we are now trading into this fair value gap here that I'm highlighting with my cursor. Coming and reclaiming this inverted fair value gap right here highlighting with the cursor. It's also in that orange box. So we're getting a little bit of bounce on the first uh, first test of this fair value gap here. So when we came down and we hit 86 quarters, you'd see that our low here was at 82 halves. So we just traded down into this fair value gap. And so that's why we got our immediate sort of um, couple points of a bounce. Now I believe that the trading algorithms have switched to a sell side model. So we should see bearish PD rays be uh, respected. So I believe that we've gone from a bullish uh, algorithm to a chaos algorithm and now to a, um, a sell side algorithm. So let's just watch this idea through. Coming back into this inverted re, uh, inverted fair value gap, and we are reclaiming it. Again, I want to reiterate that the draw on liquidity here, just remove these lines. The draw on liquidity should be all the way back down to our New York open here. So our New York AM open here, that low comes in at um, 964 evens. Again, that's 964 evens. And the reason why I think that we're going to draw back into this is because we just swept the Thursday London PM low and the Thursday London AM low. We haven't fully explored that pool of liquidity down here. So I think there's going to be a strong draw on liquidity back down below our New York equities. Uh, open. I need to be watching my account because uh, I don't need to hold, I don't think I need to hold this thing all the way to uh, to that. Let's take a look at our one minute time frame. So our sell side algorithm has now taken control of the marketplace. And so we're probably going to get some sort of a retracement here. And we're going to just sit through that. So sell side algorithm has taken control of the marketplace. And so um, we should see any bearish PD arrays be uh, respected. So right here, we might come up and invert this fair value gap. So um, there. So, uh, sell side algorithm is in control of the marketplace, so any bearish PD arrays should be uh, respected.
Again, uh, let's see if that's an immediate rebalance. So uh, our high comes here at 82 quarters, the low of candle one, 82 halves. So we actually have a quarter separation right there, quarter one tick separation between the candle on my current cursor uh, and the candle on my current cursor. We have a one tick separation there. So this could be a mitigation block here. Mitigation block being halfway of the move. Again, I think that we're going to come down and at least uh, want to come down and explore our liquidity below New York AM low. So we have a probably what that's going to be is a mitigation block. Um, you can see that we've reclaimed this inverted fair value gap. Reclaim meaning that we traded back to it. We're also trading into this first black candle here to the left. So if a sell side algorithm is in control of the marketplace, if we come and have a retracement, uh, it should respect this inverted fair value gap up here at, uh, what's that high right there, 92 evens. Should react off that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these lines, just telling you where we have separation. Even a one tick separation is, is good. We want to see separation in the candles. We're now trading below this green candle here. I'm going to call that a mitigation block, but I'm not super familiar or comfortable with the mitigation blocks, just like I'm not super familiar with the immediate rebalances. They're not, they're not in my opinion, critical PD arrays. Just call this a green candle that we're trading. Uh, price is going to want to come in and refer to that later on. How much later on, I don't know. See if we get some separation between the candle on my cursor and the current candle. If we can get some separation there, that would be a good sign. An immediate rebalance is when you have uh, a fair value gap and then it just immediately pops back through it, redelivers, and then pops back down. That's an immediate rebalance. So we see that we are getting some respect of this order block that I'm highlighting with my cursor. Or that's not, yeah, that's not really an order block because there's no. Um, displacement, but it is, we'll just call it a black candle. So black candle here. Not an order block because you want to see that fair value gap come immediately after the order block, which we don't see here. This is just our first black candle right here. This is a black candle. Let's call it a black candle. So sell side algorithm is currently in control of the marketplace and what it's doing is it's starting to offset distribute any shorts that smart money took up here. So it's starting to offset distribute shorts that were um, shorts that were taken from 130, uh, from 149 to 114. So the sell side algorithm is going to want to off offset distribute these short positions that were taken higher. And uh, so that's why we see that we're, we're getting some retracements. These are offset distributions. But ultimately, um, again, I think our draw on liquidity is much lower, back below New York AM low. So New York AM low would be at uh, 964 evens, and I think um, we're probably going to see trade below that at some point today. Take a look at our Micro Russell. Micro Russell. Um, let's take a look at our 10-minute time frame. So we traded back into... Okay, fair value gap here. And we traded, we uh, closed um, just above the 50%. This would actually be an optimal trade entry, I believe. Um, we closed, yeah, that would be like a 61% retracement, right? Uh, so anyways, uh, we respected the 75% retracement of this fair value gap. So we have clear separation now, clear separation, which is good. Um, we want to see that. We want to see separation in the candles. Um, so I believe that uh, slowly, slowly, the sell side algorithm is going to work us lower on the micro micro Russell. So you see lots of um, separation in these candles. So that would be a good sign. Um, it could want to. It might want to come up. And let's see. We have um, order block up here. So might want to come up and take me all the way to break even on this trade before. 
so basically where my order is, you can see where my current position is. The micro Russell might want to come and trade all the way back up to like even above it and then trade lower. Okay, so we're coming back up to this inverted fair value gap on the NASDAQ and I want to see uh, if price is going to respect this. So we're trading up to the low. Okay, we're at the low of this fair value gap. I want to see if it inverts. Current high, current high is going to come in at uh, 92 evens. Okay, we're trading now into it. Current high is at 93 evens. So we're trading into this inverted fair value gap. I want to see if uh, sell side algorithm has taken control of the marketplace, then we should see this inverted fair value gap respected. Remember folks, there are three types of algorithm. Buy side algorithm, sell side algorithm, and chaos algorithm. Buy side algorithm takes you higher, sell side algorithm takes you lower, and chaos algorithm keeps you in a predefined range for a period of time. I'm coming up on the uh, top of the hour, one hour before New York lunch. I believe that a sell side algorithm has taken control of the marketplace. So I want to see, we're trading into this inverted fair value gap and I want to see um, if it is respected. Riker Russell. I want to see if this um, bullish order block here, sorry, bearish order block, this green candle here, if price wants to respect that. So I'm probably going to come, it's probably going to come in and uh, take me all the way to break even on this trade and then probably trade potentially even up into this fair value gap, although that might be a breakaway gap. So we might see that separation stay open. The reason why I have 1847 spot one as my target is because we uh, that is 25% into this bullish order block uh, that I have here. Okay, I might even want to trade lower on the day into the 50%, but I'm not going to call on that. I'm just going to call on trading into 25% of this order block. 1847 spot one is my call on the micro Russell. Going back to the Nasdaq. This is on my Apex Trader funding account. Inverted fair value gap. We uh, traded into it. Our high here came in at 96 evens. So that uh, was basically, what is that? Right at the 50%, right? Yeah, like literally one, uh, one tick off the 50% of this inverted fair value gap. So we should draw lower now. Sell side algorithm. Uh, should be in control of the marketplace, which should want to take us lower. What's the destination? At least below uh, New York equities low. That's at, um, what does that low come in at? 964 evens. Should want to come in and deliver us below 964 evens. So sell side algorithm is in control of the marketplace. And so it's going to want to uh, deliver us lower prices because that is what a sell side algorithm does delivers you lower prices so you have a, a fair value gap here that might want to invert no that didn't want to work okay let's try the clone so we have another in fair value gap right here separation in the candles that might want to invert. I am not an expert on inverted fair value gaps by any means. You should go watch Michael Huddleston's work for that. Michael talks about these inverted fair value gaps all the time. Um, separation in these candles is, is really a key algorithmic signature. So we're always looking for these separation points. And they can be, um, they can trade up into it the first time and that's just a normal fair value gap. 
They can invert, okay, where you trade through it and then it comes back to it, it inverts. I'm kind of calling all of these inverted pair value gaps, they're not. Um, this one is just a, uh, well, anyways, they work on both sides. They work when they go through it and then use it as dynamic support and resistance and they work the first time. I'm sorry if I'm not getting the terminology exactly right. Uh, these fair value gaps, where well, they work on both sides. They work on the, the first pass and then they work on the, on the inverted side as well. I'm hoping that makes sense to you. So, swing terminus should be, again, below New York uh, equities open. Now, ideally, I'd want to see that come in before New York lunch. So I'd want to see it um, trade below New York equities open here at 964 evens uh, in the next, like, 30 minutes, basically. Um, 35 minutes. So the London Stock Exchange is going to be closing uh, soon. Yeah, let me check out London Stock Exchange close. Yeah, London Stock Exchange closes in 33 minutes. So it's going to close at 11.30 New York local time. And so I really want to see a drive lower uh, coming into London close. Remember, guys, even during your New York session, AM session, the London Stock Exchange is trading. And London is a financial hub of the world, right? So London is very important to watch. Even if you're an American trader, you've got to watch London. London is the forex capital of the world. London has a huge amount of um, financial history. A lot of uh, big, big money goes through London. So you want to be watching your London stock exchanges, folk. Watch, watch your London stock exchange times. So what am I talking about? Um, 11.30 here, New York local time, the London Stock Exchange is going to close. Okay, so even though the New York Stock Exchange is going to stay open, obviously the London Stock Exchange closes in 30 minutes. What does that mean? Well, we expect there to be a pickup in volatility for the next 30 minutes. So you always have to watch for London. London's a tricky beast. Check out our micro Russell. Still good separation in these candles. We traded back up into this fair value gap here that I'm highlighting with the cursor. Came up and traded just above the 50% of it, and now we are coming lower. So that, that's a good sign that the sell side algorithm is in control of the micro Russell. NASDAQ uh, has slowed down. I still believe that a sell side algorithm is in control. This is not a swing terminus. Swing terminus um, is a more dramatic move. So, coming into the last 30 minutes of London trading, we're seeing this fair value gap get traded right here. Might want to come and reclaim this inverted fair value gap up uh, at 95 evens. So might want to come all the way back up. All the way back up to, um, what is the low here? 100 halves? 100 halves. It might want to do that. Still believe that a sell side algorithm is in control of the NASDAQ and it's slowly slowly offset distributing higher shorts top of the hour here last 30 minutes of London trading
So we see this separation between these candles has been closed off. So we're probably going higher now uh, for the next couple minutes. Although our close here was at 87 three quarters and our open here was at 87.50. So there was a one tick separation volume imbalance uh, right here actually. Okay, so we are now reclaiming this inverted fair value gap. Reclaiming meaning we're coming back up to it for the second time. And so let's see if it wants to respect it. Last 30 minutes of London trading. So the separation in these candles is paramount. Delete this one. And I think I'm going to bring my stop down to break even because I don't want to see it trade, below, trade above this inverted fair value gap. And if it does, uh, I will end the video with that. Okay, inverted fair value gap, we traded above the 50% of it. I'm allowing it to trade all the way up to 100 halves. I would prefer not to see it trade to 100 halves, but I'm allowing it really even trade it, trade above it but not close above 100 halves. I don't want to see it close above 100 halves. Okay, 98 quarters, 98 3 quarters, 99 3 quarters. Just trade it too coming up to that 100 halves. 97 quarters, 96 halves. Hundred evens, 99 quarters again. Okay. Coming up to that uh, to re-deliver 100 halves. That was 100 quarters we just traded to. We saw it there. Okay. stopped out on that trade. Not the not exactly what I wanted to see. Michael Russell is still sitting there. Um might take this down to two contracts. Well no. So uh it traded through this fair value gap here and it displaced higher. So at this point, I could have gotten a part of my analysis incorrect. So I'm just waiting. I'm now just waiting. I really did not want to see it uh, close above 100 halves, but it did. So we took a scratch on that trade. I still think that our draw on liquidity is uh, lower. But at this point, we've came up and uh, what says that low is at 114 quarters and this high was at 113 half. So there was separation there that price now just redelivered.
but I am flat now. Small loss on the day. So at this point, it's difficult for me to say. I could have gotten my analysis, you know, obviously incorrect. Uh, that goes without saying that um, my analysis could be incorrect. But I am flat now. So we're trading back up into this 10 minute inefficiency that we see on the left. And at this point, I think it might want to even come and sweep our New York AM highs. So our New York AM high comes in at 149 evens. And uh, I think the price might want to come up and sweep 149 evens. Um, obviously, your AM silver bullet did work out. It took you to a short-term low. So uh, I did not take profit. Uh, that's okay. Um, going to wait for another trade. So at this point, it looks like it does want to sweep um, 149 evens. And then I want to see how we trade from there. Micro Russell. Um, my idea remains valid. So obviously um, I got part of my analysis incorrect there. Uh, we came down to the consequent encroachment of this black candles wick and then we uh, we bounced off that forming equal lows here at uh, 56 quarters. So part of my analysis there was incorrect. I still I'm holding on to a draw on liquidity back to New York uh, equities open. Coming into the last um, 20 minutes of London uh, stock exchange trading. We just swept a New York AM high here. And uh, we haven't taken out the ultimate New York AM high up at 145, excuse me, yeah, 149 evens. So what is our high come in here at 145 quarters? So we have not uh, swept our AM, our New York AM high. We've not swept it. We swept this uh, intermediate term high here at 141 halves. I'm not going to get short yet until I see a bearish PD array. I want to see a displacement candle. And I'm here live trading for you, um, well, obviously on a recorded video, uh, just to practice tape reading. Tape reading using ICT's concepts, Michael Huddleston's concepts. Um, here with the micro Russell, I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, well, do I want to take, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take my profit because uh, it is kind of rejecting off this order block here. So what I do want to know, I put an alert on. So $20 on the micro Russell. So $20. Happy with that. It's lunch money. Happy with the $20. So we could be uh, looking at a chaos algorithm now on the NASDAQ, meaning that it's probably within a defined range. Um, we swept this New York AM uh, short-term high here. We swept it. Didn't make it up to our New York AM high, ultimate high here at 149 evens. 
So we swept some of the liquidity that would have been sitting here at 141 halves. I want to uh, wait until we see some separation in the candles before I get short again. I don't want to get short. Um, I don't want to get short without separation in the candles. As you can see, I'm not Michael Huddleston, so my, you know, my trading is not by any means perfect. Micro Russell, um, I might want to get back in short here uh, at some point. Also, going to put an alert here because it could. Um, I want to see if it respects the consequent encroachment of this wick. I'm not very convicted on the micro Russell right now. NASDAQ, um, that might be an immediate rebalance right there. No separation in these candles though, so I'm going to hold flat. Let's go back to the micro Russell here on the 10 minute time frame. For our New York AM low comes in at uh, 56 spot 9. New York AM low at 56.9. Consequent encroachment of that wick there would be at about 58 evens. And I think it's possible that my daily analysis might be uh, incorrect. Uh, so we might not actually get much more downside movement on the micro Russell. It might just want to come down to the consequent encroachment of this wick and bounce. I'm not sure yet. So, just going to put an alert there at uh, 58 evens to let me know if we get down to 58 evens. NASDAQ, we have a fair value gap here. Fair value gap between uh, 120 quarters and 130 quarters. A fair value gap here. And if we can close below it, maybe it will invert. Okay, Micro Russell's coming down. We're currently sitting up $20 on the session on our Micro Russell. We are currently sitting at a um, $800 loss on my Apex account. I traded top step during the Asian session um, yesterday and hit my profit limit, so not trading top step. respecting this fair value gap. I'm actually going to um, get long two. And I don't want to see a trade into this fair value gap. So let's put a stop there. Let's stop right there. I don't want to see a trade there. Uh, I'm getting long two because we're respecting this fair value gap. And um, I'm going to what is this high right here? 149 evens. Just going to put my uh, sell limit right there. I think we're going to come and sweep 149 evens because we're respecting this fair value gap. Could be stopped out though.
So it's respecting this fair value gap right here. Which makes me think that we're going to uh, push higher. I'm going to put the stop right uh, there. Because I don't want to see it trade back into this. I want to leave. I want to see the separation stay open. So if we don't, then I'm wrong. I think it's going to want to come and uh, sweep this uh, New York AM high, one forty at one forty nines, and then the reason I put my uh, take profit higher is because uh, that would fully uh, to re-deliver this uh, fair value gap on the ten minute time frame, and it's the Nasdaq, so it just slips higher. So I think we're going to come and run 149 evens. We're going to run this New York AM high. I'm going to take out that liquidity. That's what I'm foreseeing in the future. Yeah, immediate rebalance is not my um, strongest understanding. So this fair value gap here, we traded down into it, respected it. And now let's see if it inverts. So just where my cursor is. I don't have time to draw a box. Just need to follow my cursor. See if it respects inverts on the way back down. 130 halves. See if it respects that. Follow it. Just look at where my purple cursor is. That's an inverted fair value gap because we traded down into it traded above it and then traded back to it for the first time so it's not reclaimed so it's just an inverted fair value gap and I want to see if price respects it and if it does then I'm pretty confident we're gonna go and sweep that 149 high Respect means uh, close above it, close at it, close just barely into it. Yeah, so we just closed barely into it. So we're coming up on the London Stock Exchange close in 12 minutes. Okay, so now we're trading back into that fair value gap. And still, uh, so from where my cursor is to where my cursor is. Just follow my cursor. This is the fair value gap that I'm talking about. And I want to see if price respects it.
No separation in these candles, so just efficient trading. Last 10 minutes of London. Just efficiently trading right now. Dipping back down into that same fair value gap. not very confident with my trade. No separation in these candles. Okay. So obviously it did not want to respect that inverted fair value gap. Uh, so we are going to take a loss. And I think that our original idea is probably uh, in play. So sitting with a loss now. Came back down to this fair value gap right here. Uh, that it's uh, currently working off of. And I guess my, you know, it's possible that my original idea here uh, might end up being correct. So I'm just going to give it a minute. Let's see if it has um, separation in these candles. When price gets very efficient like this and it's just trading in both directions, the chaos algorithm is in control, that's when the confidence in my trades, um, you know, wavers. So it's possible that my original analysis that the draw on liquidity is going to be below New York equities open uh, is correct. In, in fact, it's, it's looking more, like, uh, more likely than not that it, that it is correct. Um, so, but with that being said, uh, I'm going to wait to re-enter the marketplace. Michael Russell uh, did come down and looks like it might be respecting the consequent encroachment of that wick right there. But I'm not uh, super interested. Let's check out a one hour time frame. Got a fair value gap above. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to long this. Let's see. New York AM high. I was going to come in at um, 1871 spot six. Looks like we did get a bounce off the consequent encroachment of this wick. It might be worth um, a long. We might draw back up into this New York AM high. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's stop uh, just a couple ticks below this, and then uh, put the target up there at New York AM high, which is up there at 1871 spot six. 1871 spot six, because we are seeing some respect of the wicks down here. So my original analysis that we were going to get a big uh, down candle on the daily, that might be incorrect. So coming into the London, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to 
put it all the way up there at New York AM high. That might be a little bit ambitious. We have a short term New York AM high here. Let's just say that we're going to draw up to that. And that is if we see that we, we have this respect of this, uh, can't, this wick. Uh, okay, uh, NASDAQ. We are coming up to the close of London trading. Just going to say that the Micro Russell is going to draw up to this New York AM short term high. Okay, we've, we do have a fair value gap above, so whether price is drawing to liquidity or it's going to want to come and converge on an inefficiency, either way, there should be a draw to my profit target. Okay, uh, NASDAQ. There was a volume imbalance here. Price traded through it. Oh, we're getting a little bit of separation. Um, probably going to re enter this short. Yep, we're going to be short. Stop loss is going to be up here. And. Um, As we're coming into New York lunch, I know that our macro is not going to be as dramatic. So I'm just going to put uh, the buy limit right here and put the target right there. And I will be happy with that. Uh, Micro Russell. Yeah, so the reason why uh, I decided to go ahead and uh, put my target right here. We have obviously um, equal lows, so there should be a pool of liquidity that's building up um, right here. The, uh, yeah, there's. So there should be a liquidity pool um, right here that price is going to be interested in and draw to. We're coming up uh, on London close, uh, coming into New York lunch. And so even though I think that the ultimate draw is down here, uh, right now I'm just looking at this. So this is our draw on liquidity. And I'm just going to take a full pull there uh, and be perfectly happy with that. Marco Russell. not super confident with this trade, but basically I'll, I'll tell you why I'm taking this trade. Um, go back to the 10 minute. You see how the price came down here into this rejection block and into the consequent encroachment. Didn't quite get there, but the consequent encroachment of this candle that I'm highlighting with the cursor. You see that? That would indicate to me uh, a failure swing. Now a failure swing could take us all the way back up to the New York AM high here at uh, 1871 spot 6. But this might also be a counter trend move going into New York lunch. So it could just be a, um, a short term counter trend move, basically. Our ultimate draw lower. So remember what I told you is that I think that on our daily time frame, we're looking at trading. We're going to want to come down into this order block, basically, right? So I think that we're going to look on the Micro Russell to 1840 spot six, but uh, it might not want to do that immediately. And so I'm basically just taking a counter trend scalp. That's what I'm calling this. Um, I think that we're going to draw up at least to this short term high right here. And that comes in at 66 spot three. Uh, and the reason why I see that is because as we trade down into this rejection block, you can see that uh, it came down in just into that just into that wick there rejected. And um, that is uh, what Michael Huddleston calls a sufficient run on liquidity. So we did have a run on liquidity here. Uh, and if you have a failure swing situation like this, it's still a run on liquidity, even if it doesn't breach the low. Um, so I think we're going to draw up to this uh, short term high at 66 spot three, although we're coming up on a bearish PD array. I'm just going to close it. I'm just going to take my profit. I'm taking it. I'm pulling it because this is a bearish PD array and I might just want to curl back down. So $31 on the Micro Russell. NASDAQ. 
And by the way, I, I you know I can only trade these micro Russell singles intraday. I don't have enough money uh, to trade anything else. So, you know, I have conflicting ideas, right? So this is a bear sorter block right here, but it also was a failure swing. So it's very efficient trading right now, and I'm not super clear on what I think the micro Russell wants to do. Uh, so, with that being said, um, I, I would be interested to see how it trades uh, right there. So I set the alerts on it. NASDAQ, uh, drawing back into our, looks like it is going to draw down to our draw on liquidity. It's down here. You don't need a book map to see this, folks. You don't need to pay book map. I'm sure that they're a fine company and their software is great, but you don't you don't need it. It's redundant. You know that you're drawing liquidity is down here because uh, multiple kind of equal lows. So there will be a draw here. So efficient trading on the NASDAQ right now. We do have some separation. Right there that I would be interested in. Uh, want that to stay open if possible. Like to see that stay open. Yeah, I I could just be missing this, um, not seeing this right at the moment, because it could also draw up to these highs. So I'm not sure. Very low confidence in my tape reading right now. I'm seeing both sides. I'm seeing both sides, but we did respect this uh, fair value gap here. don't like what I'm saying and close it because there's another draw on liquidity I'm gonna get long again if I see that this fair value gap inverts so not my best trading today so, oh yeah, there it is. Okay, that fair value gap did invert and we are now drawing higher. So, same idea that I had uh, five minutes ago. So, pool of liquidity, higher. Fair value gap is also higher. There it is. So you see that this fair value gap inverted as we traded through it and then on a second time frame we came back to it and it inverted. So there's going to be another draw on liquidity and it's up here. Coming back down to that inverted fair value gap. Let's see if it respects it. If it does, I'm going to add on a contract. And add on one. Looks like it did respect it. Came down to it again and bounced. Okay. So this little separation here that we saw uh, does look like price wants to respect that.
Okay. Um, I'm just t taking a measured move of this swing here. Projecting that higher is my target. Stop loss, protective stop is going to go in the market. Michael Russell ended up hitting my target, but that's okay. Okay, so measured move on the NASDAQ uh, using this swing right here. Now, you could have also pulled it from this one, but I decided to be more conservative with it. Measured move would be up to 179 spot 50. I took, uh, I'm taking a full pull at half of that. Actually, just gonna pull that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just pulling that. Okay. Coming into New York lunch. Let's see how it uh, wants to treat this fair value up here. So I obviously got my draw on liquidity incorrect, so I need to look higher. Take a look at my daily. Let's look at the hourly. Could be drawing up into this Wednesday AM high. This comes in at uh, 219 spot 25. So let's uh, drop that. So Wednesday AM high comes in at 219 spot 25. I'm going to say that that is now our draw on liquidity, which is higher. All right, I'm going to enter uh, one in at the market. Order filled. Just in case it wants to go gangbusters without me. And uh, probably going to load in more. Uh, if we come back down. So evolving narratives, right? And my original draw on liquidity was incorrect. The uh, actual draw on liquidity is going to be, at this point, I believe it to be Wednesday's uh, New York AM high, which uh, comes in at 219 spot 25. Again, that's 219 spot 25. I think that's where we're drawing. Uh, Micro Russell. Yeah, we're probably drawing up to uh, Thursday's New York AM high. Let's go down to the one minute time frame and see if we can. All right, I'm going to take a long. Stop loss is going to go below um, this order block right here. And uh, I'm going to put the take profit there at uh, Thursday's 
Thursday's AM high. Okay. NASDAQ. We're long one at the market just because this thing could end up running all the way to the target without without any retracement. If we get a retracement, I'm probably going to load on more. The key, folks, is, is the draw on liquidity. It's not the PD race. The key is the draw on liquidity. You'll make money even with bad entries if you have the draw on liquidity correct. Really, the entries, if they're optimal, are just um, icing on the cake, really. Uh, yeah, there's no... Uh, Nothing more important than the draw on liquidity. The draw on liquidity is the determining factor. So that's what you have to know. Russell came down into this order block here, Paris order block. Or did we have a, I'm actually not going to call that an order block. Maybe volume and balance. Yeah, volume and balance came down to the top of it. Now drawing into Thursday's AM high, I believe. You might want to go run that. It's also a fair value gap sitting above it, so whether it's drawing to liquidity or it's drawing to this fair value gap, either way, it's going higher. Move the stop up. NASDAQ. Not my best trading. Not my best trading. For sure. But I originally thought that uh, the draw was all the way back down. And it was not. The draw is indeed higher. So I believe, let's hide the drawings, that the draw on liquidity at this point is going to be Wednesdays a.m. New York AM high. Wednesday's New York AM high, and that's going to be a 219 spot 25. I believe that that is what NASDAQ is drawing to. There's going to be a pool of liquidity above Wednesday's New York AM high. Again, that's Wednesday's New York AM high at uh, 219 spot 25. I think that's where price is wanting to go. Michael Russell coming back against me. I think it's drawing up to Thursday's New York AM high. One minute time frame. I'm gonna just leave the stop below this order block of these two black candles in case I am wrong.
yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with this stop. It shouldn't come back down here if, if my draw is correct. Gotta know the draw, folks. The draw is the key. The draw is the key. Price is going to do what you want it to do if you have the draw correct. These PD arrays are just um, entry mechanisms. The draw is the key. And it was difficult for me to see at the open today down here that we were going to draw to New York's AM high here from Wednesday. Um, but I believe that that is where we are drawing. And um, yeah, I think that's where we're drawing. So sometimes you're going to get your draw wrong, and uh, you need to you know recognize when you've got your draw incorrect and uh, reassess. Because sometimes you are going to not get the draw correct. I'm going to pull this. Order filled. Because it's going to at least come back down to uh, this inverted, sorry, this fair value gap. It's going to come back down there. Could come down to this lower one as well. So, coming into New York lunch, we are going to go run some stops, short-term stops. So, with that being said, Order filled. I'm going to take a quick short just down to our um, right here, this fair value gap. I think we're going to come down to there. I remain bullish on the NASDAQ. And I think we're going to come down, uh, well, I'll put it halfway, right there. I'm happy with that. I remain bullish, by the way. This is a counter trend trade. It's against the draw. It's a trade against the draw. Because we are in New York lunch, so we should have some retracement. Or we're coming to New York lunch. So we should have a measure of retracement. Which is why I'm also going to pull my micro Russell. And uh, that'll be commissions for the broker. So micro Russell. Coming up on New York lunch, we're going to just take out some short term stops. So I'm going to be short, and I'm going to aim for right there. So 
They're coming up on lunch, so it should want to go and uh, run a couple stops. Okay, I'm happy with this. Order filled. All right, we are at uh, just a small loss on this Apex account for today. Micro Russell. I think it's going to want to draw down just during the lunch hour. So just for a bit here, come back down, run some short-term stops. So I'm going to put his right there. NASDAQ. I'm probably going to get long again here, depending on uh, how far into this fair value gap it wants to trade. Hourly time frame. We did run Wednesdays. Um, let me take a look. Let me hide. Let me make sure that I'm getting my draw correct. We drew up and we ran Wednesday's PM session high after sweeping Thursday's London session low and sweeping London's PM session low. We came up and we swept Wednesday's PM session high. We also came up and we redelivered a fair value gap here on, uh, it was formed on Wednesday. So I might. The draw might still be short. I don't know. I'm very conflicted. I'm very, very conflicted. I'm extremely conflicted. The draw might be to to Wednesday's New York AM high, but it might also be back down to Thursday's New York AM low. This might be a seek and destroy profile. This thing might want to come all the way back. The re-delivering a fair value gap that it's respecting. That's why you need to be reassessing. So. Wednesday, uh, Wednesday's New York AM low swept. London swept. And we sweep Wednesday's PM. Yeah, this thing might want to come all the way back. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, who boy, um, this is tough. I'm gonna get short. Order filled. I actually I'm thinking that the draw on liquidity for NASDAQ might still be lower. This could be a turtle soup. 15 minute time frame. Possible. We swept Wednesday's PM session high. We, well, we've ran it. We've ran Wednesday's PM session high. Traded into an inefficiency that we are now... Looks like it might even want to rebalance it. That's making me think lower. That's making me definitely think lower. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking lower. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. What is this? This was Wednesday, the 14th of June's PM session low. Did we sweep that? Yeah, we did sweep that. Did we sweep? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The draw is lower. The draw is definitely lower. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh, the draw is lower. The draw, the draw is down here. That's the draw. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the draw is lower. Yeah, so looks like New York AM, this was New York AM session high. That was it, that was the high. We're going lower. We're going lower, folks. Yeah. We're coming way lower. We're drawing, we're drawing low. We're drawing low. We're drawing low. I missed it. This is Seek and Destroy profile. That's what this is happening right now. Before your eyes, it's a Seek and Destroy profile. Up, down, up, down. Sweep both sides of the book. Still needs to come in. Yeah, 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 yes. That's it. It's coming lower. That's what it wants to do. It wanted to come up and take out the liquidity from Wednesday, the 21st of June's. Um, wanted to take out Wednesday, June 21st, uh, liquidity. Sweep this liquidity, then come and drive lower. That is the draw. The draw is lower. So we might even see a directional lunch. Um, that was New York AM session high. Russell 2000. Let's examine. Four hour chart. Newark AM session low. Comes in at uh, 1856.9. No, that's, is that New York session? Take a look. Yeah, that's New York session. So New York session low comes in at 1856.9. Trade back up into da 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 da. That was definitely our high. I'm confident it shouldn't go back up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing it now. I'm seeing it now. That was New York AM session high, New York AM session low. Trade back up into uh, an inefficiency here. I'm going to call that an inefficiency. We're going to go sweep this low. That's it. That's what it wants to do. It wants to come and sweep. Uh, it's drawing to New York AM session low. That's what it's doing. Strong to New York AM session low. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right, I got it. I got the narrative. There it is, right there. That was just um, trading into an inefficiency during the New York AM coming into the lunch hour. This is a um, seek and destroy profile. Come up, we form the New York a, uh, New York AM session low here at uh, 1856. Uh, spot nine trade back up into this inefficiency form our New York AM session high at uh, 1871 spot spot six trade back down we draw for the first time we don't quite get there but we draw to the New York AM session low then we trade higher into an inefficiency now we're going to come and run we're running New York AM session low that's what we're doing we're running New York AM session low. I, I don't think we're sweeping it either. I think we're running it. So I'm going to put it just uh, down 
we'll do this. I'm happy with that. We're running New York AM session. We're going to run New York AM session low. NASDAQ's going to run New York AM session low as well. That being said, I'm pulling this order filled for going to replace it with one contract order filled at all times I could be wrong so I am going to take some risk off okay folks I'm going to stop the video there we will ultimately see if I'm right um, because this video is getting way too long this has been the New York AM session coming into lunch for Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. Um, as you can see, the key to ICT trading is not the PD arrays, folks. It's not. It's the draw on liquidity and it's market profiles. It's draw on liquidity. And so if you can identify the market profile that we're working in, if you can identify the next draw, that's where the money is made. The bread is buttered with the draw on liquidity. And so learn your market maker profiles, learn your buy side profile, learn your seek and destroy profile, which is difficult, I'm not gonna lie. Make sure that you are um, marking out your highs and lows, uh, classifying them by session. And um, I, you know, at all times you gotta, sometimes you're gonna be, the market's gonna prove you wrong and you need to reassess, okay? The market's gonna prove you wrong, as you've seen here, I ended up profiting thus far today, not because I'm a, not because I got the first like. I, I wasn't trading very well this AM session at all. But you can see that as I'm reassessing, I'm reassessing where the draw is and where the draw is. If you can get the draw, the next draw correct, you will you will do well. So that is going to be it for this uh, live session. Um, talk to you later. Bye.